taking a look at section four, properties of real numbers. Uh, this table is really gonna help us through this section. I'll be looking back at this to talk about the types of number situations that we'll come across. We'll soon see that select operations that we've dealt with previously, let's say in kindergarten, just counting numbers. We see that there's a certain way that we can rearrange those and a certain property that follows along with it just to say that this works and it can also be reiterated in a different way mentioned below it. So with this first property, the associative property, this hint is going to help us out saying that we associate with different groups. So if we have three numbers being added in an order, doesn't quite matter the order, we could rearrange those so that some numbers are out of order or if we put parentheses around a different set, it still will give that same outcome. Because if we were to evaluate this further, five, and we're adding on parentheses with 15 and four, this is saying that five plus 19 is the same thing as 20 plus four, collectively getting 24. They also note that this works with addition and multiplication. So although the example here is addition, we could also see this in multiplication where we might see something along the lines of two times five is the same equivalency as five times two. So that's one way that we could approach this. Uh, be on the lookout for the multiplication version that comes up every now and again. If we take this further, we also see with the commutative property, this just deals with the ordering of this. So since commutative has an O in it, think of the order. And I guess this actually doesn't quite work. Like so it would be more so parentheses. And I guess you would have to say times three. Scratch this one, start fresh. So this would have to be something along the lines of five times two times three in parentheses is the same as five multiplying with two times three. That's better. So that would be dealing with the associative property. So with the commutative property, this considers working with how the numbers are laid out. So this has five plus four plus three is equal to four plus three plus five. And this works with addition and multiplication, but not quite subtraction or division. So that's crucial. With the identity, if we are adding, let's say zero, we end up at our identity. But if we're multiplying by one, that also gives us our identity. The additive identity is zero, multiplicative identity is one. Inverse is a crucial one, and I think that this is the most intimidating. So let's make a note of this. I think this is tricky because as we see in the example, we have a fractions, but one way that we can work around this from the hint, it says that if we put our car in inverse, you go backwards. So a good rule of thumb is that if we have some number and we add the opposite, so negative nine is considered the opposite, a positive nine, if we add those together, that gets us zero. If we have nine and we multiply that with the inverse, so I'll rewrite this. So nine, we could have rewritten as nine over one because anything divided by one is itself. And if we multiply this with the flipped fraction, so let's imagine that one is up top, nine's on the bottom. This is collectively one. So they note this over here with the inverse of fractions, A over B is B over A as far as the inverse go. And we can also double check to see if we have an inverse working correctly if we multiply the product and it ends up as positive one. In the next video, we'll see how the examples highlight on these properties.